Hello and welcome to another Ecom Ops podcast. Today I'm talking to Anatoly, uh, who is an entrepreneur, an e-commerce expert, a salesman, and if you can see the video on YouTube, there are a lot of awards in his background. So he really knows uh, things to say about growth, about growth strategies, about e-commerce. And yeah, Anatoly, welcome to the show. Thanks for being here. Tell us a bit about yourself. Thank you. Thank you, Norbert, a lot for inviting me. And I'm really excited to share my experience, what's working for me in e-commerce uh, space and really like enjoying to be here. Thank you. Awesome. Um, thanks for being here. And please tell me a bit, how did you land into e-commerce? What did you move in this direction? Yeah, like my story is quite long and uh, I will try to make that as short as possible about how I begin. But I start completely from like uh, ground zero. Uh, in, back in 2017, when I used to work in Dubai, me and my wife, we were just like uh, renting the small uh, room uh, in the Filipino couple uh, apartments. And she informed me that she's pregnant and we were financially not stable. I mean, we were not good financially. I was changing the works. I was trying to get some better for our, for ourselves, but all the time was failing. And when she informed me that she's pregnant, I said, listen, I will go and buy another test to make sure that it's true. But it was the happiest moment of my life. But in the same time, I never been so scared on that particular moment. Uh, as per on that moment. So I went to the pharmacy. I remember it's like February 24, 2017, uh, 35 degrees outside in, in Dubai. And I'm just walking to the pharmacy and, and understanding that that cannot go anymore that way as it's going. My baby cannot come in this world in the financial situation where I was growing and where I am right now. And uh, I promised to myself that I will make the changes. So I just, in a few man months later, I sent my wife back to Ukraine. Basically, we are from Ukraine. And uh, she is supposed to deliver baby there. And I was just searching online what I can do uh, to start my own thing and make extra income. And on, on August uh, 15th, if I'm not mistaken, 2017, I opened for myself uh, e-commerce by reading some ebook which is starting from zero nothing special just simple ebook about how to create your first shopify store I, i'm like wow seriously <laughs> like is it possible and that's where my journey really began uh, it was the most hardest and funniest time in my life definitely awesome so a new baby was coming up and you started a new business, so two babies at once. Uh, <laughs> that must be quite some work. How how did it go then? So you opened your first store, um, or you provided help other people to 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 grow. What what was what came first? Yeah, when I started August, I found out what is e-commerce. I started studying, consuming all the YouTube uh, influencers, and understand, trying to understand how it works. And I said to myself, "Done. I'm going to be doing that for all my life." And uh, whatever it happens, I understand that 95 or even 99 percent of people are failing and quitting. I won't be that person. I will be that top one person who's going to be win. I put the setup in my brain in that way, and I had so much fails. I was just uh, trying to start with my store. I didn't think about the service. I didn't think about the agency. That moment, I was just like, I'm going to be a builder brand, as always. As everyone, I see all common uh, beginner's goals. It's just like, I will now launch, and I'm going to be build a brand. I'm going to be the millionaire. And like, this is how it goes. <laughs> Yeah, but I, I see this a lot in way. Facebook groups and, and Instagram and wherever those people come together and the newbies always uh, think, yeah, I'm going to start and uh, it will work. Yeah, so I started this dropshipping model. My first store has mm -hmm. been launched uh, 29th September of 2017 and I start spending everything what I had. Plus, I have got five extra part-times uh, to plus I, I used to work as a business developer uh, in the gas company and uh, from 7.30 a.m. till 5.30 p.m. I was in the office and after 6.30 p.m. I was on part-time serving the villas, the restaurant tables and so on, just, just whatever is going to be giving me a cash. 
and on free time at night before getting asleep i was studying and consuming the youtube and was working as a uh, actor on the video shooting for bollywood movies on the photo shooting for some kind of advertising in dubai so i was doing whatever i can just to grab the cash and instead of saving because my baby is coming i start making decent money for that that particular moment of my life instead of saving i was spending everything on facebook and the ma- major problem again for because i was newbie i didn't know any people out there i didn't have any mentorships I just waste all the budget, everything what I had, all my savings, even more. I started owning from people money and like uh, borrowing the money. And I didn't have the time. I didn't have money to fly for my for the delivery of my son. So I have to borrow extra uh, cash to go there because all the time free since uh, beginning of October till end of January, I was just spending on something which I didn't have clue how to manage. Because on YouTube, nobody telling you exactly step by step, small details, how to manage that. I was just grabbing information from thousands of people in YouTube and obviously it didn't work out because you have to follow only one strategy and step by step moving with that and only that. So that I didn't know. And finally, end of January 2018, I found out the mentor. Uh, it was a mastermind whereas the person is jumping on zoom call on the group coaching and helping analyzing the ad accounts analyzing the stores products and telling you what to do step by step and in first 15 days of training my first eight thousand dollars in sales profitable sales i like wow that's that's how it should after wasting all that time and uh, my wife was saying to me that she will divorce me if i won't stop i was like i have seen the light at the end of the tunnel <laughs> Oh, and it changed finally because of the mentorship. What what exactly did you change? Did you change the products or the strategy or was it simply a wrong setup that you did? Uh, simply, I didn't know what KPI to look for. I didn't know what uh, like criteria I have to follow and what step-by-step action I have to do. Like For example, the first months I was like launching the campaigns and make the changes of these active campaigns during the day. I was killing campaigns on the middle of the day, launching another one for in the middle of the day. So it just burning the, the advertising budget without uh, even let ads optimize. And at the same time, like I didn't know about the columns, what kind of columns KPIs I have to look for. Like nobody was explaining at that time about it. They were just speaking about the strategies, nothing else. And I like, whoa, that's so simple. I just organized my columns in the Facebook ad account. Oh my God, I had so many checkouts on this product, on that product. Oh my God, this is what I have to look for. Uh, it's so simple. And uh, the common uh, newbies mistakes are uh, like, oh, and my mentor said to me listen man you have here potential winner i was testing one product again and again it didn't work out i moved to another one another one and he said you have a winning product on your store test it out i just launched the campaigns as he said on the way how he, he explained it boom winner on the board he was always with me i just didn't realize that you know that's really cool and then um you had your store it was fruitful and uh worked out finally right mm-hmm. um and yeah and then you founded the agency to help others yeah so basically that store failed uh, almost uh, instantly after i made my first cash because of updates of algorithm and facebook is mm-hmm. it's another thing which i learned during the journey my journey was full of fails i'm just explaining to you now in short but if to speak about my, my background it is like a couple hours to a podcast where i used to share before with people and uh but through all those fails, I just made one simple, important thing. I will never quit on that stuff and I will figure it out how to deal uh, with the struggles and I will manage whatever it's up front. So I was failing with one store, with another store. And after that, I started getting results on my first store when I reactivated and started again in summer. And by autumn 2018, uh, one of my friends, by, the, by that time, I started growing my friendship online in different groups of for e-commerce. And one of my friends who was in the same mastermind with me, uh, he said, listen, I have a story. You have a knowledge in Facebook because he didn't study uh, Facebook at all. He was just like part- partnering with one person who just quit on him. And he said, let's combine our skills and try together. And that's where fun began. Uh, October 2018, 50,000 in, in a month. November 2018, 150. 
uh, March 2019 to 150k in less than three weeks. So we oh, wow. like it, the, and a lot of screwed ups happened there as well, but it become finally on the right direction with the profitability, with the high end payouts. So yeah, I just it took me me a year for real results. But a year is nothing. I mean, uh, yeah. you 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 learn so much, and I always think and say uh, learning from the very own mistakes that you do um, and improving things is a good thing. You do not need to study everything or just go uh, and, 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 and make years over years in trainings. Um, if, if you really hard learn something and do a lot of testings and fails, you can be as successful as if you would have learned it over many, many years. And maybe even 100%. better because you felt it on your own. You really needed to improve and, and you needed to, to, to get better uh, because of your financial situation, because of you being a father um, and need to um, um, uh, get the money for the family. Um, and then you had this store uh, together with your friend. It was successful. What, what's next? You, you founded the agency and, and helped? Uh, so while we were scaling those stores, uh, that store, that was one. And after that, we opened the second one and third store. Uh, that wow. was a shoe store. So we, uh, I, I was sharing my journey in, in my Facebook uh, group or in my Facebook uh, profile. And I was just sharing with people like what I went through, what I'm going through. When I got all those fuck ups, sorry for this kind of words, but it's it, there is no other words to describe this, this kind this of stuff. This is a podcast for grown ups. We understand it. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> and I was sharing all my fails. And after that, my when I get success, I was sharing fails and success and on on the mix. And people were following me and like, hey man, can you teach me? Hey man, can you help me out? I was like, I never thinking about, first of all, I'm like, uh, I'm abroad. All the Americans asking me for that. And I'm like, come on, like, I have no even perfect English. They saying, yeah, please, can you show it to me? How are you doing? Can you teach me? And I decided I will give a shot. I start coaching for free. I was just saying, listen, let's jump on the call and I will, I will see what I can help. And I shared uh, the skills for, I mean, the, the strategies uh, and uh, what I have for the Facebook, which we are using for ourselves which working now for us and it was work out. And after that again and again, I'm like, Hmm, that's interesting. And I like, uh, start saying to people like more and more about success and about who I help and people start coming more. And I like, okay, I will do the coaching. And I was doing one-on-one -on -one coaching as done my mentor. It was the per per best example for me, how to coach person. He jumping on the call, sharing the screen, analyze his in life, analyzing his ads, telling him what's wrong, what needs to be fixed, answer on the questions, not a group coaching where it's PDF going through for one hour. And after that, thank you guys, follow and ask me questions between the call and he's not responsible for your success. Nobody responsible on the coaching side. But when you are holding someone or someone else's arm and in the real life telling him duplicate, scale, like do some changes in the way how it should be on the call, that's the actionable things which is really makes the difference. And I just was doing that and we had some success. Not all the time it was working for everyone because otherwise it would be like everyone will be millionaires around the world. But the thing is that it was working quite well for several people out there and like, okay, that's awesome. But I was exhausted. <clears throat> so I was already back to Ukraine uh, running my, uh, my stores with my partner and in the same time uh, coaching several people. And I had like uh, twice a week calls one on one with every single student. And in one shot, I had like 35 plus students. Each of them was half an hour with me on the call. Instead of having group coaching, I was doing one on one with every single one. So I was like six days a week, completely exhausted from morning till night, one by one calls. And plus Sundays, I was sitting down there ad accounts and was recording them audio, what they have to do, what they have to fix. So and I was like, oh my God, that's too much. I love it, but I start hate it because I have no time and power and energy for my family now. My wife start complaining now, not, in, not about money, but start complaining that I, I don't have enough time for them, you know? <laughs> so I'm making money, divorce. but no time. Yeah. <laughs> no, there is no stop, divorce stop, anymore. Stop that. <laughs> <laughs> that was just like uh, she was 
was uh, trying to explain it that I'm doing wrong. And I was like understanding, but I love what I'm doing. And my mentor said to me, like, hey, man, you have to pivot to the agency side. I like agency. And by the way, that moment, I already had one media buyer because there was requests for managing stores as well, not just explaining. And like, okay, I got a shot. I give a shot for a couple of uh, ex-students. And we scale one of the stores at that moment to 3.5 millions. And that was like, wow, that was really wonderful results. And I was with one media buyer only, which is I was teaching him from scratch. He's from, from my home city. He was His skills, what I was needed, is just English, nothing else. Everything else I was showing to him and teaching to him what's business manager, what's Shopify, and so on. Finally, we made the results uh, and we made some small results on different stores. And after that, my mentor saying, you see, that is working. Move to the agency side. I like, okay, it was COVID 2020, March, 25th of March. I just decided to change the direction and all my students become my clients. Not all, some of them. And some of my students, ex-students become my media buyers and it started growing. In the first year, we grow to 12 team members. And after that, uh, we were just uh, scaling the stuff, scaling the revenue and just organizing the company. And I was learning while I was going because I never been a CEO. I never was managing the team. I'm a simple guy. Like, and uh, that was really tough, but freaking interesting moments in life. These are ones of those beautiful success stories, to be honest, working hard, working even harder. Um, and, and finally having the success because of all this hard work and energy that have been put in, not just the, I want, and then, uh, I do a lot of other things, um, and, and, and not really focusing on the company or the idea or the learnings, but doing a lot of other things. And when you really work hard, when you really put a lot of effort and energy in, there is finally something coming out. It's maybe not the thing that you started with. So you started with web store and finally it's an agency. Um, but uh, it's, it's something that you can really take away from all this hard work. And this is cool. You have seen a lot of things on the market. Did the trends change over the past few years? Yes. Yes, yeah. definitely. Like there was not like completely changed, but there was changes in the process. Yeah. And a lot of like iOS 14 updates, tracking issues, uh, COVID happened. Uh, a lot of e-com businesses were actually expanding, but a lot of the businesses has been shut down the doors who were not able to manage mm -hmm. uh, the changes. The thing is that ev I would say every six to eight months happening some huge update or change, which is really uh, making, helping us to adapt. I mean, helping us to grow by adapting and implement the new skills or shut down the doors. Mm -hmm. And that's what is in the last two years, I would say happening since uh, middle of 2021, when Facebook uh, score happened, like 2019, March, we made in three weeks, $250,000. And after that, in the 20th of March, I believe update of the Facebook happened, Facebook score page. And suddenly, bam, next day we have zero traffic to our store just because the Facebook updates happen and so many people just quit on dropshipping, quit, quit on their uh, e-commerce businesses because they didn't know how to handle that. We, mm -hmm. we as well had no clue, but as always, we were, were repeating to ourselves, we are going to manage. That's it. And that's really what I believe the biggest difference for people who are staying on the boat and moving forward and growing or people who are just like seeing the hard moments and decided to not learn on mistakes and just quit on the stuff because it's easy. So basically, yeah, uh, the changes has been happening and it's still continue happening all the time. Now the, the this kind of tracking issues, which is going already for a year, uh, TikTok show up, TikTok completely changed the industry. Uh, Twitter start performing much better than ever before because like when Elon Musk could just complete the uh, purchase uh, uh, setup. So, so there is so much opportunities right now, like it's endless. But the thing is, it's becoming harder to jump on the board. It's mm -hmm. becoming harder to start it. But definitely, if you start, if you figure it out, you like, there is no way back. Like I know that if, even if Facebook will shut down the advertising, I will be on the right different direction. Before 
I remember when we opened the agency, I said, we're going to be the Facebook agency. I don't care about Google. I don't care about anything else. We're going to be a Facebook agency. This is what we master, and we're going to be mastering it even harder. When iOS 14 updates happens, when TikTok show up, we just understanding that, no, that's not correct. To survive in e-commerce, and especially if you are a brand or a drop, simple dropshipping store, and you have a consistent results, you won't be ever having any more consistent results if you won't adapt to the changes and do not start creating the ecosystem for your business, which is like start advertising on the Google, Facebook, TikTok, Snapchat or Twitter, and especially making the backup setup of SMS and all marketing. That's actually what we are focusing in the agency. And that's allowed you to scale consistently to compare if you rely only one or traffic source. I just give you the example about Facebook. Suddenly from 250, it was 14K a day to like not zero, a couple of hundreds because of uh, email retargetings, but it was, it was insane. And yeah. there is left and right, this kind of change is happening. We need just to adapt. There is always a lot of, uh, a lot of change in e-commerce and you're absolutely right, especially during the last couple of years during Corona. I mean, a lot of competition came. Everyone that was offline just wanted to have a store. I don't know how many stores came uh, on, on, on top of the list <laughs> during Corona, but and how many are gone now again but everyone tried it. I mean, the marketing costs exploded on Facebook and on Google. Everything got much more expensive. Supply chain, uh, cha uh, chains have been broken completely. Mm -hmm. yeah. So a lot. I, I know a lot of customers who have a store, a successful store, and simply cannot deliver anymore because they don't have enough products on stock and they need to wait in the way yeah. to get new, new material. So this is really insane what's going on and now the next change is already in the pipe um what's your opinion about uh the 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 world's most talked about ai gpt influence in e-commerce that's the most wonderful thing what could happen to us entrepreneurs yeah. that's uh, <clears throat> it's not like it could sound that it's uh, kind of scared stuff. I mean, because come on, if that kind of technology is already here, it's future is there, it's here. In our days, future is already uh, online. But if you look on that from the entrepreneurship perspective as a business owner or just freelancer, it doesn't matter. As a person who understanding that what he can get from it, it's a time saving. It's a time saving, it's a cost saving, and the most important, it's an amazing tool for brainstorming. You mm -hmm. cannot rely on this program, just give it all the tasks, I mean, questions and get the answers and just implement it. No, this app, <clears throat> this software, uh, this chat is amazing for brainstorming. So improve your average order value, improve your conversion rate, improve your ad copies, improve your UGC, Everything can be done by just speaking to that chatbot and just getting all the information. And after that, follow the proper instruction for your team, which is before would get a couple of hours or even one or a few days for, to create the landing page for copywriter. Now it can take 15 to 45 minutes. Mm -hmm. Write down the, like one of my friends, he's in Forex market. He has huge company in the uh, Forex uh, automation bot. He wrote the 45 follow-up messages in 45 minutes. 45 follow-up emails, emails, not messengers, sorry. So I can tell you definitely, it's a, such a blessing for e-commerce people and for any kind of business owners, for sure. Yeah, I, I also believe that this is something that um, will help us. I'm not afraid of it, and I don't think we as entrepreneurs should be afraid of it. Um, it will not even cost jobs yeah. because we have anyway two less people uh, all over the world in all those, um, let's say, strategic and marketing and development departments. So we need anyway resources. Of course, people need to rethink their positions um, because AI will, will change a lot. But I think it will help all of us to do a better job. Um, and that's yeah. absolutely the, the thing we should look at it. 
look mm. on this case i just just want to add uh, it cannot be uh, make you scared because any kind of machine requires the operator yeah so everyone will still have a job yeah it's just a way of doing the day-to-day work to compare as it has been done before that's it which is to make better faster and easier in somehow yeah um what's the most important thing every e-commerce business should know <coughs> sorry no problem. i would say uh, <laughs> i would say that it is about the diversification what i just was explaining about the ecosystem because about we are speaking now in our day about nowadays mm-hmm. it is the consistency issue yeah and it's true it is consistency issue whatever you are doing if you are doing that on the only one platform or you are not testing the new things even on that platform like we have really seen so many problems with the businesses who came to us who were let's say on one platform fine understanding so let's implement another one but there was no even tests so people are like diversification problem and not enough testing problem like if you have something on your hands you have always uh, uh, put at least some percentage not big let's say 10 20 percent of your budget on the testing new stuff on the testing because if you want to test the new creatives if you want to test uh, new platforms you won't be able to build the consistency. Creatives are dying off so fast in our days. The uh, team, right team members, it's number three. If you don't have a team and you want to scale, you won't be able to do that. Even I remember my uh, 8,000 in 15 days, I was dying in the email answering. Like I scaled kind of fast without experience. I was seeing only numbers. This is what I was excited about. But there is a back-end work, fulfillment, customer service, uh, uh, answer on all the requests, which is like about the, the, there was T-shirt, uh, different color, different sizes, cancel my order, can you change the address? I realized that it's not possible to do alone. And it was only like 8,000 revenue. Can you imagine like 1 million revenue a month? Like yeah. it's completely different game. And if you want to expand, it's another thing, it's a team. So many entrepreneurs staying on the level where they are because they're scared of hiring people or they're thinking that they will do better than anyone else. You have to hire people who are doing better than you, particular thing. So they're going to be additional uh, additional percentage of you in the particular subject. So you will be to take it out all those busy work, technical work from your brain and focusing on growth, which is mm-hmm. to allow your company becoming bigger and stronger. That's as a, as a business owner, as a CEO, you must focus on, especially in e-commerce, like the team consistency uh, and uh, t- a good, uh, making a good enough test uh, to make sure that it will bring you to the consistent results and profitable results. If there would be one or two things that you really would recommend to an e-commerce store owner, what do I need to do to make a significant growth push for my store what is the most important thing or the most one or two things uh, build a community if yeah. already existing brand or whatever like it's already having uh, results if you're not speaking about the brand new store it's build a community so then uh, even you have a reliable community you will be able to sell them again and again because nothing uh, is easier to sell them to the person who you will already sell something in the past. Mm-hmm. And it, it's an, it, it provide value. Second thing, it's provide value to the community, to just uh, like to the world about how your product will make their life better. It's nothing else uh, like a great approach uh, in customer service. So it's a customer service providing value and uh, build the community. It sounds easy. But it's incredible. It is incredible hard, especially yeah. to write, to build the community which is going to be engaging with your brand. It's so hard because they have to be interesting. So, for example, if you have already good enough leads, sending emails, hey, this is our VIP group. 
become our VIP member and getting the best offers uh, before anyone else. Like holidays offer or special discounts by being in VIP group, you will be able to get X, Y, Z and uh, keeping them on the, there as much engaged as possible, hiring the moderators who are going to be staying there and keep it in touch with them about your niche, giving them updates, providing them value. And after that time to time, the offer and the, and the last thing, which is, I highly recommend, and I actually insist on that is that. Uh, if you are in the e-commerce space and looking for the long run and especially consistency, it's uh, uh, recurring revenue for your business. So means subscription service. It could be uh, some some kind of like your product, which is need to be always refilled uh, or even uh, like Amazon Prime, Shopify, VAP, which is like pay $9.99 per month, get the best deals, get deals first, being in separate group or whatever it could be look like on your end. But subscription, that's for sure. And one of, I believe, in the, of the top things for the consistency and even bring evaluation of your company in 10x higher than if you're just going to be generating 100, 200, 300k a month. But if to remove the advertising, you're zero. But if you bring consistent subscription service, you can turn off the advertising and you're going to still make in the six figures a month or even more That's because cool. you have subscription base. Yeah. Subscription base is always nice. Absolutely. Um, based on your experience, what role does automation play in e-commerce? It is one of the important factors after the people, because when you get people on the board and you start growing, I got that on my end as well. Uh, you understanding that doesn't matter how awesome could be the team members, what kind of skills they have, what kind of hustle muscle they have, like w whatever they are ready to follow with you and implementing without automating the system of the workflow processes. And especially like uh, if you're speaking about e commerce business automation on the fulfillment and customer service, you would start hating everything. So the automation really important in the business after the right team members, because you need to make it easy and fast to deliver, to deliver the tasks to your team. And that's what every single, I don't know any single business owner who was mastering that from day one, you always struggling with the right hiring from the beginning. And you always struggling with the building automation from the beginning. If you're learning from scratch, if it's not your third, fifth or 10th company. I'm speaking about like my personal journey. I started from scratch with no experience building the company. Yeah. The automation is really important. Cool. Thank you so much. Um, I need to agree, of course. Automation is one of the, I think, most important things. As soon as you grow, you need automation at some points or integrations because you don't want to copy paste the entire day. You have more important tasks and things to do. Uh, but yeah, fully agree. Last question for the day. Um, who has taught you the most about e-commerce in your career? No, can, can you repeat? I didn't get it. Who, who has taught you the oh. most about e-commerce in your career? Uh, I have, like, I still having a lot of mentors at yeah. the moment. And right, like right now I'm, I'm master in several masterminds, like a powerhouse brand, like agency founders, accelerator, uh, and, uh, several of the people who are mentoring me by themselves on the e-commerce business owners who help in understand some particular subjects, because when you grow in, you have the different, uh, mentors in the different industries, like let's say strategies for Facebook, let's say Google agency how to run so management and so on so i have a different directions uh, for myself and for my team mentors but my main mentor who helped me out back in 2018 january when i joined him as i was explaining it before until today we're still working together but now we are we're working not about e-commerce not about facebook now it's completely about real estate in us and uh, several like lifestyle and uh, team management stuff and his name is mark hager he's an amazing person now he moved to the real estate part section eight so uh, like i love to like refer to him because that guy is amazing awesome thank you very much it was really a pleasure talking to you Anatoly. um yeah 
build a community, work hard, and uh, automate things. I think these are three um, points that are very important. Uh, listen to other people, get a mentor um, that can that can help you, that can guide you. Also very important. And what I have really understood, I think, and, and what, what I've seen, don't give up. Yeah. Uh, if you really work hard and you believe in what you're doing and you don't give up, um, you have, of course, success. Maybe not in that exactly that point that you started with, but you learned so much um, around the topic that you just can have success. I agree with you. Thank you, Norbert, for Thank you very much. Your... Have a great Appreciate day. Appreciate it. Thanks. Bye. And that's it for this episode of the Ecom Ops Podcast. If you enjoyed listening and would like us to find and interview more e-commerce operations experts, please search for Ecom Ops Podcast in your favorite podcast listening app and then subscribe, rate, and review. Until next time.